Hey guys, welcome back. So I'm back with Mel Order Soulmate. We're on page 22 and we're going to continue reading. Catherine didn't know what she should do. Her new husband, a big bear of a man who hurt himself with a don't mess with me fierceness will, while emitting a conjuring era of warmth and kindness, was staring at her. Just staring, not blinking. It was if a fuse had just blown in his mind. Only though, only through his bracking eyes, she could witness approximately 573 different thoughts zipping by with each passing second. She had managed to get here a day or two sooner than she promised, and she had assumed that her early arrival would be fine. Now she realized the error of keeping her focus only on getting her son and herself here safely. She tried to suddenly warm her hands by cupping them together. It was cold here in the mountain town of Blueberry Springs, really fugitive. Much cooler than London usually got, even with that biting dampness that deceased each winter. Here, snow had already fallen, and the sun was covered by low, pressing clouds that she guessed was filled with more of the fluffy stuff. You're my wife, Sack inhaled loudly. Then I saw trying the sentence on her sighs. He repeated himself more firmly, You're my wife. He had a nice voice, Catherine decided. It was low and rich, as if he might sing wonderful lo- love songs and add something to them that even Frank hadn't been able to. Yes, she said. We met online. Yes. He started nodding as though things were coming back to him. All right. He stepped aside so she could come in. She didn't move, but instead watched him, checking for signs that this wasn't a safe place. There was a gentle curiosity in the way he looked at her, but he also had faith scars that suggested his past hadn't been filled with chairs and roses. He also had well-defined muscles that hinted at discipline and a saint that said he was ready to fight any given moment. And while she knew appearances could provide clues they often weren't enough on their own to determine who was safe to be around and who wasn't but when it came to right down to it it was zach's slight awkwardness that gave her hope hope that he was the kind of man she was seeking the kind whose own life had been somewhat like hers lacking perfection and ease so he would intensively know that some doors to the past were best left and open Behind Catherine, Axter began to fuss. He traveled fairly well for a two-month-old. There had been times when they'd been on the move while in disguise, for he hadn't been able to settle, but overall, he was happy as long as she was moving. She had to strollers in various locations as she tried to create code trails in case anyone was following them from the UK, opting to carry Axter against her under a flowing shirt as though she were an expectant mother again, or tote him around in a picnic basket like she was a little red riding hood off to visit Grandma. He'd been a trooper, and as a result, they made it here safely. Now, though, she ignored her son for a moment, focusing on the man in a soft gray t-shirt that stretched over his biceps, apparently immune to the cold that was knifing its way through her jacket. Your baby's wet, he said. He's not wet. Okay, he said, as though agreeing, but his diaper is wet. Zach had a calm certainty. She identified as a woolly American. The Brits she'd known tended to be overly polite and simply gave way with strangers. Well, the general population, not anyone from her family, that was for sure. They were pretty good at making their own rules and finding reasons to take whatever they wanted. But Zach had that something most men sought, charisma, but with a cool allotment. He could firmly disagree with you, and you still like him afterward, and he was the kind of man you wanted to be near just to see what he'd say next. She'd bet he was loyal above all those. And despite the uncertain of fierceness, she noted that once you were a part of his inner circle, he'd protect you to the ends of the world. Or maybe she was protecting 
projecting since she had married a man she'd never met and needed to 